This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be covering why I type everything, including primitive data types. For example, we might have some text of type string and this will equal Bob. Here you're going to notice that I explicitly defined this to be of type string or that I provided this variable with the type annotation of type string. Even if you can see right here that it is a string. And if there's a number, I will say that it's of type integer. And the reason I do this is because I'm a huge fan of static type checking. And this actually saves me hours of debugging on a regular basis. And there's also a second reason. And that is because I find it extra explicit and is what I believe to be the best way to communicate to all of you what my code is trying to do when I am teaching. I mean, once again, if I were to create a variable called number, of type integer and assign it the value of 10, it's going to be obvious from the beginning that this is an integer. We don't need that type annotation to understand that. But the reason I do this is because I make a lot of errors when I'm programming, and this prevents me from accidentally passing in the wrong type, especially when I'm teaching. It's so easy to pass in the wrong type when I'm actually teaching. I mean, there are plenty of times that I'm teaching something and I'm typing and I accidentally tap on the quotation marks and then pass in the string value of 10, for example. Now, when I'm teaching, I can see immediately that something is wrong here because my Pi is going to warn me. And as trivial as this mistake might be, a silly mistake like this will ruin your program. Or I mean, there are high chances that your program will still work, but just not as expected. So for me as a teacher, it's very important that I annotate everything I do. Another reason is that it shows all of you exactly what I'm doing. You can even mute the video and you will still be able to understand my intent with the code. I mean, watch what happens when I type in names of type list of string. Already at this point, I don't need to assign it any value for you to understand what I'm trying to do here. Here I'm creating a list of names which are of type string. Then inside here, we can pass in Bob and some other names such as James. What I'm trying to do is obvious before I even get to the value part, which is great for teaching. It's extra explicit. Then of course, when you're coding alone, you can choose whether you want to include it or not. That part is up to you, but for me to be extra explicit when I'm teaching, it is incredibly important. And let me show you another example with what I mean by that. Here, we're going to create a function called get sum, and it's going to take a of type float and b of type float and it's going to return to us a float. Already with these type annotations, you will understand immediately what I'm trying to do here. I don't actually have to add the implementation for you to understand that I'm trying to add A to B and that I want to return the sum of it. In this example, it's going to be quite simple. So return A plus B, and that will be the entire function. But once again, what I told you with these type annotations is what the function should accept and what it should return. And in general, the name should tell you what it does as well. But you can't always rely on that 100% because some names are just bound to be confusing. Now, if we were to create the same function without the type annotations, we type in get sum, a, b, and we leave it at that, there's a lot of information missing here. A and B at this point can be of any type and can return any type. If we were to, let's say, return A plus B, some drunk developer might someday think, okay, let's add A plus B. And funny enough, if we were to actually print this, you'll see that that's going to work just fine. I mean, for an example as simple as this, it might not really be that important. Most people will be able to deduce that getting the sum of anything should be an operation performed with numerical values. So this example might not be the best, but in more complex examples, being extra explicit with those types can really be useful for anyone who's actually reading this code. And there's actually one rule that I like to follow as a teacher when I'm programming and teaching all of you how things work in Python, and that is to always be consistent. If you ask any developer about when you should use type annotations, a lot of them, if not all of them, will give you their very own special set of rules. For example, if it's obvious, I won't annotate it. Otherwise, if it isn't obvious, I will annotate it. Or another developer might say, I never annotate functions that start with the letter S. Everyone has their own special set of rules. And if I were to do that, then it would lead to very inconsistent coding because obviously relying on your own personal set of rules is never a good idea if you want to share code with millions of people. Now, what you do at the end of the day is up to you. 
Some companies might be super strict with type annotations and some might not care at all. If you're creating some throwaway scripts, you might not care about all this safety because you won't use this script ever again. I mean, if you just want to calculate the sum of X and Y because you're doing taxes, so here let's pretend I have $3 and we just want to calculate the sum of X and Y. In a throwaway script like this, you might really not care about adding type annotations everywhere because you're never going to see this script again. I mean, watch, I'm just going to delete it like that and I'll never see it again. Not using type annotations here actually saved me time and didn't disrupt my workflow. But if you're creating something that you expect other people to read, or that you expect to use again in the future, type annotations can save you a lot of trouble. Anyway, just know that Indently is a channel that is pro type safety and that Indently will always accept you whether you decide to use type annotations or not. But yeah, that's actually everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the subject. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.